Hi, this is Damon Pistolka, host of the Faces of Business, where I talk with interesting people sharing life and business experiences to entertain, engage, build community, and provide information to help others succeed. If you're interested in learning more about one of our guests or how we are helping business owners generate wealth and build businesses they can sell or succeed at Exit Your Way, you can find more information on our website, ExitYourWay.com, or by contacting me directly, Damon, at ExitYourWay.com. I hope you enjoy the show. All right, everyone. Welcome once again to the Faces of Business. I'm your host, Damon Prestalka. And first of all, I want to apologize because we're about five minutes late. I was talking with Sarah. We got on the topic of children, and I can go on about that. Uh, but Sarah, today we've got Sarah Johnson here today from Jambo John. We're talking about creating websites that speak for you. Sarah, awesome having you here today. Thank you so much for the invitation. I can't wait to dive into this awesome topic. And it's so nice to be introduced to your audience. So hello out there. All right. All right. Well, we're excited to have you, Sarah. I mean, wow. We were going through some potential topics, things. There's so much happening in the website world right now that uh -huh. I, I'm excited to talk about some of those. But let's start a little bit farther back. Yeah. So you guys started doing web development in the early 2000s early 2000s uh-huh <laughs> yes so what what really it's like hey these website things are cool and they're getting more interesting so what really got you into let's do this as a business or let's start doing this yeah oh my gosh um we just time warped and then time backed so <laughs> so i actually was working at i'm i'm in utah i'm in, in salt, the salt lake valley i was working at a botanical garden in my college internship. And back in those days, the websites were brand, brand, brand new. And um, I was tasked in the communications department to help create the wireframe and the content for the websites. And so that was my first introduction to that experience. You know, I was working in PR, talking to radio stations, doing press releases, doing events, you know, doing graphic design, all the things that marketers do. Mm -hmm. And website development was brand new. Like there was no WordPress. There was no blogger. There was no blog spot. It was HTML and Dreamweaver. Oh. Like your lucky ticket, <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, and we've come so far from so far since then. And my husband, Johnny, who is my co-owner with uh, John Bo John, um, he was a marketing director for a small software company here in the Valley. And he worked with a bunch of programmers. So there's two kind of programmers. There's the ponytails and the propeller heads. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> no, let's hear that. Well, so the propeller heads are the the tall, thin ones that are really smart. And I actually made a joke about this once with a client. And the guy is like, just a minute. And he goes to his office and he gets one of those little hats, like a beanie with a little propeller on the top. Yeah. And the ponytails are the guys that code really well. But they're not on the floor at sale, selling for like trade shows yeah. and stuff. The suits come out for that. So yeah. anyway, my awesome. husband worked with a bunch of ponytails and propeller heads. And they handed him an HTML book and said, we need a website. He's like, I'm a marketing major. Cool. I'll figure it out. Um, fast forward 20 years, 21 years. And um, now we have a company. We have a team. We've built hundreds of websites, thousands of pages of copy. And have helped companies all over the country with their websites. Yeah. Yeah. And you kind of, you yourself, Sarah, you come at this a little different because you have a passion for writing. Yes. And <laughs> yeah. Explain, explain first of all, your passion for writing. Cause I was going through profile and knowing you and other things, yeah. explain some of the, the fun projects you've done writing wise, not, oh not my God. Website, just some fun stuff. Yeah. So last week I wrote some copy for a mortgage company. Um, mortgage company is pretty cut and dry, you think, right? Yeah. And I was so excited. I, I shared the copy with the executive team and they were like, this is brilliant. This is poetry. And I'm like, who writes poetry about mortgage companies? It was awesome. It was so fun to see the words coming out and the feeling of um, this particular mortgage company helps um, low income and traditionally unserved populations. And so we were talking about the tapestry of different cultures and the the feelings and the colors that are brought about from these different minority groups and creating these new American communities. And it was so fun to have copy that tells a story about something as 
cut and dry black and white as a mortgage. So um, that was really, really fun. But my my writing career started, I actually started writing a journal in fifth grade. Um, and so I have, I've written over 47 journals. I think I'm on number 48 right now. Um, and I can go back and I actually used to record my favorite commercials in my journals. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So, but I love, I love writing copy. It's, it's one of my favorite things. And the reason that's really cool about incorporating storytelling and learning about storytelling is that really great stories, whether it's a movie or a book or website copy tells the story of the human experience. And so I think a lot of people feel like, Hey, I've reached this set in my, I've reached this goal in my business. I want to show off my success. Well, if you don't show the failure and if you don't show the journey and the tragedy and the triumph and the trial and error along the way, people won't feel like you're relatable. They won't feel like it's obtainable what you've achieved because there's no struggle. And so that's what we do is that's what I do as a copywriter is really show the human experience, the struggle and the triumph in the, in the product and service that you provide. Wow. That's, that is really cool. I've, I've not heard it explained like that before when you're talking about website copy. Everybody talks about telling stories, the importance of telling stories and triumph mm -hmm. and struggles and, mm -hmm. and, and those kind of things. But yeah. when you think about that in terms of website, it really does make it, as it says, as we, the title says, it really starts to speak for you. Yeah. Well, let me, can, can I give you an example of that in my Yeah, 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 yeah. So one of the reasons why I love words is because I actually met my dad through his words. He passed away when I was 10. I never lived with my dad. And, um, and so I have all of his journals and all of his letters. And so I actually got to know him through his words. Um, and so I, I became like this passion to like collect the family stories. And so I began, I, I wrote a story about my dad and then I started writing a, my grandparents story and my grandfather, his, at the end of his life, he was wildly successful. His obituary was in the New York Times. He received a Lifetime Achievement Award from the Smithsonian. Like, this guy was stellar. He, he, was, um, he had accumulated great wealth. He had an amazing family. Um, and he really acted like a father to me. The most powerful thing I ever read about his life was when I uncovered letters that he had written to my grandmother. And it was before he was famous, before he had a successful company, before he made an impact that changed the world, he wrote a letter to my grandmother. And he said to my grandma, um, hey, I got this opportunity to go from being a professor to starting my own company. And there's like this rat race. I'm not sure if I want to pick up the, the, my running shoes again. And he said, but thank you for pinching pennies. I know things have been tight, but I believe we can do this as um, a family that we can make this dream work. And at the time I had three small children and my husband and I were just barely starting our own business. And I was starting the rat race and we were pinching pennies. And so I had this moment where I was like, I knew where my grandfather's life ended. I know the success he created. And all of a sudden I could see myself experiencing success because I realized he started where I was. Mm. And so that passion for storytelling, I, I realized how powerful it can be because it can create a roadmap of belief and a roadmap of taking action towards a desired goal. And so for in that situation, it was a family story. And my grandfather was my mentor and my guide. He acted like my father in, in many circumstances, but it gave me hope to be like, if grandpa yeah. felt the same way that I'm feeling now as a new business owner, how powerful, if I'm willing to be courageous like he was, eventually I'm gonna see some success like he did. And so that's yeah. the power of storytelling is, is not, not the glittering lights, not like the big result that you created, but those little steps along the way and the relationships that were fortified and built and the tragedies that were overcome because you're willing to take action. Wow. That's just powerful. I'm just soaking that in. <laughs> that is so cool. It is so cool that you're able to, to, to find that letter. Yeah. And, and then to see see how his life transformed from that mm -hmm. with with the hard work dedication and support with, and support mm -hmm. along the way with his family to mm -hmm. to be in, you know creating great things and doing doing some pretty incredible things yes. and then relating it back to yourself 
Yeah. Starting to visit. Yes. Well, and I think like this idea, a lot of times we don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to showcase. Why would we want to showcase our failure? <laughs> That's a laugh. Yeah. Thing. Like I've been there, done that. I don't want to do that. But I just think that um, I'd encourage your listeners if you, when you're writing your story, when you're writing, re- recording the stories of your business and you're trying to invite people into your community and your cause to recognize that the, the journey, the hero's journey, um, has to include being invited into an extraordinary world. It has to be include gathering your tribe. It has to include meeting a foe, um, failing, meeting a mentor that can guide you and teach you and help you avoid failure and help strengthen you. And then you have to have an epic battle that you almost lose. <laughs> and then you can defeat the, the, the bad guy. Then you can defeat the problem. Um, and so make sure that you're incorporating all those elements of storytelling in your marketing and then all of a sudden people are drawn to you. People like their hearts are drawn to you. Their minds are open to receiving your message and they realize they want to come on the journey with you. They want to be part of the, the success um, in, in their own business and their own family's lives. That's that's great marketing. Um, that's why you have millions of fans around the globe that love Star Wars. That's why you have fans around the globe that love Legos. Um, There's so many great companies that use storytelling. Um, but you want a cult following. If you want to follow like passionate followers, make sure you're telling good stories. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Two brands, by the way, that I love. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Anything that comes out Star Wars, we're watching it at our house. Uh-huh. We, <laughs> had, we had two Star Wars shows on at our house in at the same time in two different rooms, two different <laughs> things happening at the same time. <laughs> so. Yes. Well, Legos, Legos, how many of the same, like I have a four block brick. That's great. How many of those have I bought? How many have I bought? Like same product that I'm buying over and over again. Why am I buying it again? Is because there's a new story and my son has to buy the new Lego that tells the new story. Mm -hmm. That is brilliant. I'm buying the same product again because it has a different story. Yes. It's a different color. It goes together a little differently, but, and you have to. The right. How many right. Christmases do you sit there going through the instructions and trying to really go through them, you know, I when they're cel- little, when they get a little older. Right. Right. I celebrate that that's not my job at my house. I celebrate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Good thing. Good yeah. thing. Yeah. So the, the, it, it is, it's really cool how you relate storytelling in a website. Cause I think, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and it's not just you, Donald Miller talks about that like crazy in, in, in mm-hmm. storytelling and, and, and how important it is, but we get so, I mean, a website, you want to say, oh, this is what we do, but that really isn't, that's boring as heck. It is boring. And I think it's important to understand brain psychology to appreciate why it's important to write stories that stick. Kendra Hall is another one of my favorite authors who talks about storytelling. Um, but so this is really interesting if, if you're okay to like squirrel a little bit. Yeah, um, yeah. Our brains are designed to keep us alive <laughs> and our brains are designed to use programming that has already been installed to make things run quickly. And so this is important for a couple reasons. Number one, if your message is not easy to understand, the, the brains of your potential customers will actually sh- make your message invisible. Um, we were watching a show a couple months ago called Brain Games on Disney+. Plus. Have you seen it? It's kind of a mm-hmm. cool show. So the, the host of the show is like, okay, I want you to pick a football and just follow up the football. So there were there was all of these footballs on the screen, and they were like moving back and forth. It was illustrations of footballs. There was like 15 of them just going back and forth. And he said, pick one football and just follow it. So I pick one and then all of a sudden, literally there's one football on the screen and the background is blue. The whole background of the screen is blue. And that happens for about 10 seconds. And he says, great, tell me what you saw. And of course, like I'm talking to the host because that's what you do on TV shows when you're in your living room. And I was like, there's only one football. And he said, did you think there was only one football? And I'm like, yes. And he's like, they were all there. Because of what you focused on, your brain made everything else disappear. So our brains actually make things disappear if it's not in the like the front part of our mind, if it's not solving a problem, if we're not focused on it, the messages, the graphics, it, they'll disappear. So if your message is not solving a problem and if it's not easy to understand, 
people will not even see your message. It will it absolutely disappear. That's number one. It has to be simple. Number two, um, there's a part of your brain called the reticular activating system, the RAS. And I don't know if I have a pencil around here. It's about the size of a pencil. It's on the back of your skull. Um, and it's a filter. So your subconscious mind is processing over 11 million bits of data a second. Did you know that? No. 11 million. And this is everything from, hey, kidneys, we need some more chemicals. Yeah. <laughs> hey, um, I stubbed my toe. That reminds me of the time I was two. Um, oh my gosh, it's hot in my house. I've got to turn my air down. All of these 11 million bits of data that are happening and our conscious mind can only focus on, on about 50. And so that particular <laughs> activating system is the filter to get from your subconscious to your conscious mind of what you can see. So how do you pass this as a marketer? How do you get from 11 million to 50? How do you pass the threshold? What's your guess? Damon, what's your guess? Tell them a story. <laughs> no, <laughs> actually, no, that's, that comes next. You have to solve a problem. Okay. Because if you're not solving a problem, the brain is like, nope, I don't care about that. I don't need to know about that to survive. I don't need to know that. I have, I'm too busy taking care of my family, running my company, worrying about sales. I'm, I've got my exit strategy that I'm working with Damon on, right? And so if your marketing is not solving a problem, they will not stick around to hear the story. That's awesome. Good. And that's, and that's why when you, when you talk about websites, that, that initial, you know, whatever they call above the fold on your uh -huh. homepage is so mm -hmm. important to be real thrifty with how many words you're using, but seven. they got to just uh -huh. seven, seven, words. seven, there seven we go. Words. So we got the, and, and mm -hmm. then you, and then you, it's, it's got to explain the, the problem you solve and, mm -hmm. and, and also, isn't it supposed to, how it makes their life better or something like that? Or yes. something like that yeah, so the formula, do you want me to give you the formula? Sure. <laughs> So your hero banner is seven to 10 words. It's like a billboard. The words have to describe this, the problem you solve. So we're getting that information about the problem so that if somebody mm -hmm. has the problem, their brain's like, oh, that's the solution I've been looking for. The graphics have to show what it looks like when the problem is solved. Because the images, we want to plant that image of like, hey, like, let's say you're a dentist, okay? And you, the text might say, we help get you out of pain with root canals. So you're addressing yeah. a problem. You have your keyword of root canals in there. If that's in the text. And then the photo is not somebody writhing in pain on their bed because the brain's like, I don't want to have that. The photo is of a person biting an ice cream cone. Yeah. Feeling. Ah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That's the formula it, for your, uh, your hero banner. It is. It is crazy though. Mm -hmm. when you look at websites and you see like a paragraph of stuff or it just it just seems like we try to belch out just puke up words in 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 quantity uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. and you go yep i see them every day well, yeah. as a writer i do this all the time when i'm writing i'm like this is poetry i just like keep going this is amazing content keep going and i'll send the copy into my designer and they're like we can't have that many words we cut half of them discard half of them keep them in another document use them for your blog posts right don't throw those beautiful yeah. words away but keep it simple um testimonials should be one sentence do not put a full paragraph testimonial. Don't do it. No one's going to read it. If you're doing a case study, you can add a whole paragraph testimonial, but ask your customers to give you a review online on Google. So it's like in the public eye, grab one sentence of it and make it really big so people can skim. Don't be afraid to use bullet points um, so that people can skim through your content. And then as you, they're getting into your site, as you've captured their interest, then you could do some more long um, tell keywords and the, the, those long format content pieces like your blog posts and things like that. But especially on those main landing pages, keep it simple, keep it short. Um, use alliteration, use poetry, use rhyming words, like make it sticky. Um, another thing, uh, Kendra Hall, like I mentioned, she's a great author. She has a book about writing stories that stick. 
but she talks about when you're writing a story, have specific memories, specific details, because what's going to happen is if you mention a specific detail in a story, my mind will recall that memory in my own life and I will relate to your story. I'll put myself in your story. So yeah. for example, um, you could talk about how the chair feels when you're sitting down, or you can talk about the clickiness of the pen, or you can talk about the sound, your ringtone of your cell phone, all those details. I bet you guys watching and Damon, you just were thinking about all those things because you've had that experience of clicking a red and white pen that you got at a trade show, right? Um, <laughs> so using, using details will anchor people into the stories and help them see themselves in your stories as well. Yeah, that's great. That's great yeah. because it is, it is so your um, skill to be able to write and then translate it into the stories mm -hmm. is, is really, it's really incredible. And then you think about the science you're putting behind it to really understand how people think. So you're translating it into text that really mm -hmm. helps those companies, websites connect with those people. Right. And, <laughs> right. It's a, so, it's a, it's a wild circle. Oh, well, and here's the thing is that a lot of web developers and, and this is not to disparage this type of developer, because I think that there's an important place that they hold, but a lot of web developers will say, Hey, tell me what theme you want. Give me your copy and I'll go ahead and put it online. And you can expect to find, you can put a website up for fairly inexpensive doing that. But I'm guessing that if you're a plumber, if you're an electrician, if you're a CEO of a company, if you're a technology specialist, you don't have the time to become an expert writer, marketing copy. You don't have mm -hmm. the time to know how to write, do graphic design so that the conversion rate is high. You don't have time to understand how to do search engine optimization in a way that's going to bring you revenue. Like as a business owner, you should be in the trenches building revenue, building systems, creating dreams, having a passion. And your job should be finding the right pieces, the right people to fill in your team, whether you're in-house, whether you're out of house, that have that skill that can yeah. immediately help you build your revenue rather than trying to start from scratch, figuring out how to, because you can write copy. You know, if you're running a business, yes, you can write words. Um, but are the words going to convert? Are they optimized for Google for keywords? Are they optimized so that humans can understand what they're saying and that want to take action? So I would encourage the listeners, if, if you value growth, make sure you find people in your team that can support your vision. And then you spend your time doing the things that only you can do and then um, have a team that can support you with that. Wise advice right there. <laughs> Wise advice from Sarah Johnson on October 27th, October 2022. 27th. It's getting close to getting close to Halloween. Yeah. Big Halloween plans with the kids. So fun. Get, we just went to Mickey's not so scary Halloween party in Orlando. Yeah. And the funnest party on the block, our family, we dressed up as Hercules, the Hercules family. We had pain. Oh, nice. We had Hercules, Meg. Um, we had Hades. We were just missing Pegasus. So I wish our dog was with us because I would have dressed him like Pegasus. <laughs> that would have been awesome. Yeah. That would have been awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. Well, you, let's talk a little bit more about, you've got some, you've got some stuff. Now, if people haven't looked at, don't know your website, Jambo John, mm -hmm. just like it sounds, J-A-M-B-O-G-O-N.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Um, you got, we were talking a little bit about Black Friday. You guys got some free yes, uh, help yes. on Black Friday. Let's talk a little bit about Black Friday stuff because yes, that, you were talking about it and I'm like, oh, it's it's a ways off, but no, it's coming up. No, it's not. It's it's here. So Black Friday, and there I've done this both ways. Um, there's the kind of Black Friday where I'm like, yay, it's Black Friday. And then I think I wish I would have done something for my business when I'm seeing yeah. all these people online doing these cool things. Or there's the years like, I'm so glad I'm ready. Bring it on. So whether you're like selling a product uh, that's a $25 product or whether you're selling a $5,000 or a $50,000 product, take advantage of Black Friday. <laughs> like yeah. there's it's $13 billion in revenue is going to be earned on Black Friday. $13 billion. Will you be part of that pie? Um, Amazon is the biggest retailer. If you have an Amazon piece of your business, <laughs> that's huge. But don't be afraid to take advantage of Black Friday. Um, so I've got a couple of um, trends that are happening this year on Black Friday. 
Um, let's go ahead and start there. Does that sound okay? Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. So um, don't be afraid to start early um, with inflation happening and the economy the way that it yeah. is. You see a lot of retailers already promoting Black Friday specials. Um, my realtor just sent me an email. She's doing a Black Friday gift card that people have to um, put their name and email for in exchange for a gift card drawing that she's doing for Black Friday. I thought that was a great idea. But you're going to see a lot of people, even if we're at the end of October, starting to promote. So don't be afraid to start early. That's number one. Um, and then a lot, if you're selling something online, if you have a shopping cart, a lot of merchant services offer a buy now, pay later. And so that way it's kind of like in the olden days when you'd go to the department store and have a layaway plan, like the yeah. store had it, but you as a business owner don't have to take the risk on that. Your merchant services account already has those mm -hmm. products and tools created. Um, so like, for example, WooCommerce, if you're using WooCommerce has over nine payment gateways that already are, um, built in to do payment plans, which is fantastic. And yeah. as a consumer, you've seen them. Like if you do Apple pay yeah. or do PayPal, they're like, do you want to split this in installments? Um, another thing to do, especially if you're a service-based model, or if you have some kind of education, you can do membership model. So whether you like have a subscription box are super popular now, you see a lot like with the STEM like the the science programs in school, yep. they have programs that send like a monthly box. Um, I have a friend who's in the healing industry. She has a healing box that goes out once a month that are beautiful. But you could also have that membership subscription model for content. Um, Damon, you Ooh. should do that. <laughs> like, yeah. like a coaching program or you have, you know, your, your area of expertise, you can have this other revenue stream where you're mm -hmm. taking those people who have the capacity to learn and the drive to do it on their own to make a revenue stream out of it and do a membership. Yeah. Model. Yeah. 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 That's cool. And I never really crossed my mind as a service provider rather than a product company mm -hmm. to use black Friday in the same way, but it's yeah. a good time. Yeah. Well, and here's another thought too about Black Friday is even if you're not, if, if it's like you're not a quick cash kind of business, that you're riding the tide of awareness. And so mm -hmm. there's this huge momentum, this huge tide. We're also heading to end of, we're in the middle of quarter four, almost in the middle of quarter four, but we're, your quarter four is going to bleed into quarter one next year. Like the momentum yeah. is going to carry you through quarter one. So a lot of people at this time, they're like, oh, I'll just start over in January. Well, if you don't start until January, you don't have any momentum until February. Or oh, May, yeah. 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 Um, yeah. So think about like that momentum. The other thing that's a great idea, especially if you're a service provider, if you're a higher ticket item, is to piggyback with a partnership with a nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. So um, Giving Tuesday is always the Tuesday after Black Friday. That's a really big push for nonprofits. So what I would recommend is you find a nonprofit in your area or in that's complementary to your industry and donate a portion of your proceeds or create a campaign that you can help create funds for that company. A couple of things are happening. A lot of people will buy products from a company because they support nonprofits and they support their community. The other thing too is that there's this awareness that happens, this multifaceted beneficial awareness, not only for your company, but honestly, like we live in the most wealthy time in the history of the world where yeah. there's more abundance and more resources. There is no reason why our capitalism shouldn't be supporting important causes that are funded by nonprofit efforts. So that's what yeah. I would also encourage you to do is take advantage of that. That's a great idea. I had a, had a friend of mine actually that, that he, he's not living in where I am now, but um, he moved away, but he was a, a realtor mm -hmm. and I think it was like, he had 10% of his, of everything he did went to the boys and girls club in the area. And, you know, you think he, he was here for decades, you know, and you think about how much money that helped the, those. And as you said, people always came back because they knew that that's that money was going part of what you're doing was going there. Yeah, goosebumps as you're talking about that. Well, yeah. and, and seriously, it's like we have so much abundance and so much opportunity and yeah. think about for 10 years being supporting 10%, the kids that grew up that had an yeah. opportunity for a better life and for connections and for better relationships and more confidence that went yeah. out and, and spread that into the communities that they started creating. Um, yeah. I think it's so important, especially 
right now and we're living in such of a time of polarization and yeah. backbiting and, and so much finger pointing yeah. online that to be a source of joy and light and hope that you're shining a light and helping other people serve and to have their needs met, I think is a beautiful opportunity in capitalism. Yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. That's a, that's a great, that's a great suggestion for black Friday is no matter what company you are, what you're doing, mm -hmm. service product, whatever, mm -hmm. you know, something in support, something in your community that makes a difference. Definitely. So the key, yeah. the key to black Friday is being prepared. And so yeah. we have a worksheet on our line. If you go to jumbojohn.com, okay. there is um, a link to compass at the very top, which is our newsletter. And I I'll drop a link. I, I'd be happy to share a link with you that you can very good. your group, oh. but we have a black Friday calendar that walks you step by step by step every day. If you spend an hour a day, you're ready for black Friday for um, giving Tuesday for cyber month, like you're ready for the whole week. And then we have a workbook that will help walk you through that process as well. And wow. like, like the checklist of every, every, there are so many little moving pieces. Like, is this form connected to my CRM system? Is there a tag on it? Did the email get sent with the free download? Like there's so many pieces that have to happen, which is why a lot of people don't do anything. Um, mm -hmm. but with this guide, you'll be able to have, make sure that you haven't forgotten anything that you're prepared. So on Thanksgiving, you can enjoy that yummy turkey with your family and watch the game. You can have a nap, you know, have your pie, and then you're ready to go on Black Friday. There we go. There we go. So get on to that Black Friday, on that Black Friday. guide on Jambo John. Yes. Yep. Awesome. Awesome. So the other thing that we were talking about, oh my goodness, mm -hmm. is not only Black Friday, cool Black Friday trends, tools, other things. We're talking about this article that just came out not so long ago about Google and AI copy. Yes, I just learned about this last week. So you'll have seen, I'm, have you seen ads for AI copy? Have you done, have you seen that? I have seen that. I, oh, it's been a, been a while because it, that's yeah. been out for a while and someone talked about it. So I went and looked at it and I'm like, these, these are kind of, I mean, I, I see it. I see that I can generate. Mm -hmm. stuff for you but it's like that doesn't sound like i would write so it was not really right well and of course like every side had like two coins two sides of the coin right and and one side it's so cool that the capacity of our technology literally you put in a keyword and i don't know all the details about it but it's really quite simple to give a computer some bits of data and literally will come up with new copy for your website mm -hmm. <laughs> which mm -hmm. In theory, is a fantastic idea. However, um, Google just announced in their most recent update, their biggest, most recent update, that they are going to ding you if you have AI copy on your website. And the reason why is they want to provide links to websites and to business owners that actually have expertise in that area. And so using AI copy, you just put in a couple keywords, the AI technology does the research and creates the copy that does not indicate that the owner of the company or the company itself is an expert. So mm -hmm. if you have AI copy on your website, create a strategy mm -hmm. to replace it with human made copy. And if you haven't incorporated that, don't because Google's going to ding you. Google's not okay. going to give credit for AI copy. And wow. Damon was asking, um, does transcription count as AI copy? And the answer is no, because if you record a video and you put your video of your words through transcription service, that's just making your words into a word document. That's not a computer making words for you. So transcription, yeah. they're fine. That's that it. is, that is what I was concerned about because we use it for our transcriptions every day, almost every day of the week. Yeah. And, yeah. So no, there's... no AI copy for new blog posts, new website copy. Yeah. So then you, you kind of intrigued me for one more thing and you may or may not know, but yeah. when you talk about Google wants websites from people that really know subjects. Correct. So I've recently read uh, some books that talk about, well, it was, I read, they ask you answer by Marcus Sheridan. I don't know if you're familiar with it, mm -hmm. but it's, talks about how you should be answering your customer questions on your blog post. How does this work? How much does it cost? How do, how do you do this? What's the process like? Yeah. What's the, why choose you over somebody else or somebody else? And, and not just to 
blow, but to really answer the questions honestly and say, you could not, you might, this is, you might not be a good fit if you're this, but you're a great fit if you're that. Yeah. Is that better copy on a website than, than other things? Is it really more powerful you think to write those kind of things? You know what? That is a great question. And the answer is yes. And I'll tell you why. So with your website, you're going to want to have those pillar pages, those landing pages that are going to hold up the structure of your website, your homepage about us, services, products, and things like that. Um, your long-term content strategy should come in form of a blog. And so the reason why questions are so powerful as keywords is because of this little device right here. So in the olden days, when we just used our desktop on Google, we would type out keywords that were just nouns. It would be like dominoes. <laughs> mm -hmm. right? It would be like a noun based keyword. And so as web developers, we would optimize pages just for those specific nouns. Sometimes we would include a city as a tag with it. Right. But now that you have a phone, how do you ask on your phone? Hey, Siri, where's the nearest Domino's? And so the keyword that we're searching from is actually a question. <laughs> mm, and that's why. That's why. So if you look on Google, there's actually like you have your paid ads, you have your organic ads, you have your local ads. Have you noticed there's a new section that's questions? Oh, yes. Yes. Results. Drop downs. And mm -hmm. if you put the right snippet in, the drop down kind of gives you an overview of the. Yes. Article. Yes. Yeah. So how you do that is that literally when you're writing a blog post or when you're writing a website page, the keyword that you choose has to be in a question. So use the full question as your keyword. If you're using a product like Yoast, that's going to give you a check mark. That's going to be really easy for you to make sure you've got everything that you need. But like, do you want me to give you the secret how to optimize a page? <laughs> it's really Let's simple. hear it. Yeah. Really simple. Um, the person who taught me is the found, he's like he wrote the curriculum for three local Utah colleges. So okay. he, he actually knows what he's talking about. He's Google certified, one of two Google certified SEO companies in the state of Utah. Um, so take your keyword, whether it's a question or whether it's a long tail keyword or short tail keyword, and you need it in four locations. You need it on your link. So you have the website.com forward slash what the yeah. what, whatever. So the what the what, that's your your link. Mm -hmm. Has to be in your heading one, your title yep. your website, your heading two, which is your subtitle, and then your paragraph font. Depending on the length of your content, some of those on-site optimization tools might suggest that your density is a little bit higher than that. But if you have it in those, those four places, you're going to get a green light. The other thing you need is you need an inbound link. So you need a, a link from that page to another page on your website. And you need a, a link from your page to another page off of your website. Really, really important that you're doing that. And a lot of people are like, I don't want to give links away. Yes, you do. Because that's what Google wants is to create a web of, of links. Yeah. And that just went out. That's fun. Um, and then I need you to um, put your keyword in your metadata. Make sure you're tagging your own yep. metadata per page and make sure that you're labeling your images with your keyword. So this is the beauty of this. When you optimize your page correctly with the correct keyword, if you use that keyword when you're advertising and the keyword that you're advertising with matches your landing page, your ad spend is going to be less expensive per click. And you're going to get a higher priority in the auction of Google if you're optimized correctly. Mm. Yes. Yeah. And the fact that, you know, keyword costs have gone up what, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know if they doubled quite yet, but they've done it over the last few years, gotten pretty close if they haven't. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah. 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 That's, that's great advice there because it is, it is the details anymore to, to get found. Well, and you spend so much time creating copy. It takes a lot of time to create copy and to post it and to get the graphics and things like that. Why would you spend all of that time and not spend the extra 10% polishing it for Google? Because if you don't yeah. polish it for Google, your audience isn't going to see it. The humans won't see it if Google doesn't see it. Um, yeah. So taking the time to like, once you have your transcription, if you've done that, 
and decide what keyword am I optimizing this this post for and making sure that you have the keyword in those four locations. Um, mm -hmm. Really, really simple. But you guys, I, I, we have some clients that um, have been, have doing some major offsite SEO strategy. We've been doing a lot of new content on their website. And so the site was built really well. We had a great team of SEO experts behind us and we, we optimized this page, really competitive word within a week of launching this page. We were above, we were ranking above Zillow for oh, wow. word in our area, <laughs> above, yeah. Zillow, above Coldwell Banker, above everybody. We're ranking number one on the first page because the, the container was programmed correctly. That doesn't always happen, but um, I just encourage you, like make a strategy. So when you're building out your copy, when you're growing your website, that it's you're maintaining the structure that your web developer cr created in the beginning. So yeah. Grow and get yeah. the uh, great link strategy, that link juice. That's awesome. That's awesome because, it, you know, a lot of people build pretty websites. They might even have the right words on it, but if you yeah. don't set it up right, it's not going to get found. It will not get found <laughs> or it'll get found by the wrong people and they don't want your product. Mm -hmm. So doing some research, like do people say realtor or real estate agent? <laughs> do they say when they're like with their keywords, um, yeah. they say, are they shopping for you based on your state or are they shopping on you based on your city? So you can do some research with some really cool tools out there to figure out how what the volume is and how how to to succeed yeah and you can hire oh. a competent team so we yeah. do the web development we create the design the copywriting and the programming that's what we do and we optimize the sites we have some awesome vendors that do off-site seo like the pay-per-click and if you're purchasing seo we have some awesome vendors that do that yeah yeah good stuff good yeah. stuff so you were talking about another thing when it comes to websites and that is something that people may not know is about the web P images. What's that? Yes. Web P is the next generation image. So um, if you're using a tool like Google site checker or um, GT metrics is another tool that it gives you kind of a site audit, a health of your site. If your images are saved as PNGs or JPEGs, it will say serve your images in next generation formats. So you use that word next generation format. Um, JPEGs and PNGs are quite heavy. And so if you think about um, if all of your data and all of your code and all of the like the database was in a bucket, the heavier the bucket, the more slowly it's going to take to get that data from the servers to people's internet browsers and to their phones. So you want to make sure that you are super, super lightweight. So Web P, W E B P, one word, um, is the next generation format. And so if you have a website that has JPEGs, there's really easy converter tools that you can use. You can get plugins on WordPress. There's a plugin that will take your JPEGs and convert them to WebPs automatically. So you don't have to download all your photos and yeah. resize them and things like that. Um, not all of the old browsers can see WebP images. So having that converter on your website is actually a great tool because some of the old browsers, if your customers haven't updated their browser, they'll get to your website and they won't see any pictures versus mm. the converters. They'll show a JPEG if they need to, and they'll show WebP if they can. Okay. But then, honestly, um, Google wants your site to load in 1.2 seconds, your page. Mm. And in 2020, the average load time across the internet was six seconds. So that's, that's 600 times longer than Google wants on the average. And so I, from what we can see, like you've got your programming, you've got your plugin, you've got your themes, that core plugin programming that can be heavy, making sure that's super lightweight. But the next thing that's going to slow down your site is the size of your images. So if you mm -hmm. take a, a picture from your phone and post it on your website, that photo has enough data. You could blow it up two feet by three feet and put it on your wall. Yeah. You don't need that much data. <laughs> yeah. So making sure you're cropping your images and that you're saving them out, converting them to WebP. Um, also, you can just Google WebP converter and yeah. um, you can take a JPEG or PNG and s shift it over to WebP super easy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's something because it, it <coughs> the speed requirements that, that or what Google would like you to do, um, mm -hmm. it, it, that, those kind of things, 
control where they place you even within a certain keyword, right? Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Google wants you to be the most relevant answer to their customers' questions. Because if their customers, which are the searchers, are not satisfied with the results Google is, is providing them, they will go to other search engines to find the answers that I'm looking for. So Google is actually prioritizing their customers, their searchers over their um, their companies are on, you know, their website holders because mm -hmm. um, they want the most relevant answers to the questions. They want to make sure your answers are being your ask, your questions are being answered the way that are the best of their ability. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So as you're doing the website development, what has been the most challenging site that you just until it was done, you just yeah. said, listen, I'd rather <laughs> stick a needle into my toe. <laughs> right. Well, you know what? This this client has been fantastic. We actually just finished a pharmaceutical website uh -huh. for me in Utah County um, called smithrexall.com. And that was, it's a fantastic project. It turned out beautifully. But that project has um, an e-commerce store. It has online quizzes. It has a learning management portal. Um, and it oh, has wow. an online directory for doctors. Um, and so we're adding classes, we're adding new providers, we're adding, they have over a hundred different SKUs that we added to their website. We're doing subscriptions now for them. Um, it was a wow. beautiful website and really fun. Like that, that's a great example of storytelling because this, this pharmacy specializes in compounding and mm -hmm. helps with women with their hormones, um, really specific health challenges that they're addressing at, on the pharmaceutical level. And so that was a really fun project to dive into the challenges that people are facing and then showcasing how this pharmacy can kind of hold your hand and help you, help you feel better, help you live yeah. your life. So that was a big, oh, that, yeah. that, that's awesome. And I, I can, I can imagine how the technical challenges of putting all those things together was yeah. And and trying to have it load fast and work right. Right. And right. Well, and the fun thing about hiring a great web developer is you speed up your learning process because you don't have to fail because they've already failed for you. <laughs> so yeah. not only can I tell you what plugins and themes and platforms to use, I can always also tell you what not to use. So yeah, <laughs> yeah. that that is important because you know, people that are good at what they do got there because they were bad a lot of times. Yes. Yeah. I don't think there's any other way. Really. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so I just wanted to quick take a, take a moment to say, hey, uh, Ken, great seeing you today. Thanks for stopping by. And Juliet, she's in there with lots of comments. Thanks Yay! a lot, Juliet. Oh my gosh, thank you. And then uh, Christopher, we got Christopher here today. Awesome. Fantastic. Thanks for stopping by today. You know, the, the, such interesting stuff. And I know that we're all sitting here as, as business owners and, and thinking about the websites and just what the heck do we do? Uh, so I really appreciate you stopping by Sarah yeah. and, and sharing your knowledge. Cause man, from the writing to the, gee, the telling about your grandfather, oh my goodness. And then learning, learning, you know, getting to know your, your father from the, the letters. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's powerful. Uh, stories, the the stories can change a generation. Um, being a keeper of stories is such a valuable and important thing. And I think as business owners, we cannot we cannot let go of the, the importance that, of role that we play in this American culture and in this worldwide culture that we can really make a difference and create prosperity for future generations, yeah. provide hope and provide resources and, and support our customers. And storytelling is a great way to do that. Yeah, man, if people were listening to that didn't just get inspired, I, I got to tell you, I started tearing up. I started when you started this, I got to just kind of hold back. Cause I'll start crying about this because it is true. Mm -hmm. It is true. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're shaping generations in, in what the stories we tell, mm -hmm. the way we do it and mm -hmm. the way we show younger people how we should act is is what we're, we're building the future. We are building and, the future. We yeah. Are. And there's so much hope. Oh, God. 
Like we get we get sucked into the media and we think that the world is ending tomorrow, but yeah. it's not. Like yeah. there's so much resources, there's so much hope, there's so much light. And I yeah. honestly one of the platforms that we've grown Jumbo John on is a belief that every person has come to the planet for a reason and a mission and a purpose. And for yeah. some of us, that includes owning a business. And yeah. when you're excellent in your business you lift a whole community because you can hire people. You're supporting other families. You're supporting your own family. You're sending kids to college. You know, yeah. you're great. You're serving your customers. Um, and if you're not willing to step into that role and be excellent in that role, there's so much lost opportunity, but the reverse is also true because if you're brave enough to step into it and say, <laughs> I'm going for this, you can change not only like generations, but you can change right now and right here and have prosperity and abundance and happiness and joy and enjoy failing forward. Cause we all know business requires a lot of failure, but just to encourage you guys to have, like, if that dream is in your heart and if that's in your mind um, to like celebrate that you're living in a time where there's so much opportunity to succeed. Thank you. I did. Yeah. You know. I can't top that. I can't even comment on it. That's so awesome, Sarah. I, I don't even mean that I wanted to try to top it or even add to it. It's so great. And your passion is so awesome. I'm yeah. just, I just feel blessed that you stopped by today and talk. Now, what I do want to do though, I want to make sure everybody understands Jambo John, J A M B O G O N dot com. Yep. Go there yep. and connect with Sarah on LinkedIn. Go to the Jamble John website, look at some of the great work they're doing and reach out if you want to talk to her about yes, it. Yes, I would love that. I love meeting new friends. I love networking. I send out dozens of referrals a month. And so if you have a website and you're like, I don't even know where to start, I offer totally free consultations. We can run a website audit, see how the technology is doing and brainstorm. No pressure, just a chance to serve. So if you guys want to schedule a 30 minute free consult, I would love that. And I love making friends. So that's an invite for your audience. I'd love to meet them. Awesome. Awesome. And we'll drop that in the comments cool. here after we get off today. Sarah, thanks so much for being here today. Thank you so much. I really appreciate the invitation and I'm so excited to see your audience, like their businesses grow. And I know that's what you do is you help create a growth strategy so that they can leave that legacy. And um, I just, I'm so excited to be a small sliver part of this awesome community. So thank you for inviting me. You bet. Anytime. We'll have you back again soon. Cool. Thanks so much everyone for, for joining. We have Julia, Christopher and Ken, and I believe it's Kenny, actually not Ken, but thanks so much for being here. We'll be back again next week. Sarah, hang out for a minute and we'll talk.